Growing taro root is easy. This vegetable loaded with fiber is not only healthy but also very delicious. We will look at a taro root recipe as well in today's episode. Now I've just emptied one of my containers and as you can see here I'm adding some extra compost uh, to whatever came out of the container. So it is okay to recycle some of your container soil as long as you don't have extensive root mass inside it as you can see here and then add some kind of amendments in this case I'm adding compost but I also sometimes add uh, things like perlite or vermiculite or even more manure to improve the uh, composition of the soil that we are using so in case of taro root we are growing them in this uh, whiskey barrel container which is uh, quite large and should accommodate up to three plants. Now taro root loves a soil that's a little uh, compacted and can also uh, survive in soil that is very wet. So if you do not have a lot of drainage in the soil that's okay. The taro root has uh, roots that can breathe through even water for example. In Hawaii, where taro root is grown um, very commonly, the plants are actually planted in almost stagnant water and it still grows pretty well. But as you can see here, we did provide some kind of drainage to our soil by adding some uh, perlite, as you can see here, the white particles in the soil. And then we planted two plants and then uh, we are ready to now plant our third plant. Now you can adjust the spacing around your plant. What I would suggest is uh, spacing them just about uh, like in a triangle. So if you have three plants, uh, that's the best way to go about it. You can just shuffle your plants around to make sure that you get the best uh, positioning for your plants. And taro root being a tropical plant loves warm weather. So we planted ours in May. And in June, you can see that all these three taro root varieties, by the way, you can clearly see the difference in all the varieties. One has purple stems, one has green stems, and the third one has green stems with a slight purple tinge. And all of these are very much edible. They all grow very similar. Uh, the only thing might be subtle differences in taste. And that's what I wanted to find out uh, by growing all these different varieties. And I realized that they don't really differ a lot in taste. As you can see here by August, the plant has grown pretty tall and our potting mix has a lot of compost. You can also see some little weeds here. And if you have homemade compost, you can expect some weeds in it. That's perfectly fine. And we're going to give it a few months uh, for the taro root to develop uh, strong tubers. And uh, in October, we're going to finally start harvesting our taro roots. And as you can see here, very nicely formed roots. Uh, this is the perfect time to harvest uh, the taro root. And uh, taro root is a nuttier tasting vegetable compared to something, let's say, like potato. So if uh, you do not like potatoes or your kids do not like potatoes, taro root is a good option. It tastes a little nuttier, it's denser, it also has a lot of fiber and uh, we enjoy eating taro root a lot. Now in the state of Hawaii, taro is known as kalo. I hope that I got the pronunciation right where it's called kalo. And it's used to make something called poi, which is a popular dish in Hawaii. Now the taro plant can grow either in full sun or even in partial shade. 
Now partial shade usually means about 4 hours of sun. Anything more than 8 hours is full sun. So this plant grows very well even in partial shade. And as you can see here the, uh, in the harvest, we are getting some really nice sized uh, taro roots. And uh, not only the roots but also the leaves of this plant are edible. However, it's the root that uh, takes the crown when it comes to the taste and um, cooking a lot of recipes. It's usually the root that's used. As you can see here, we are harvesting a lot of taro root from just the small uh, container. Now, if you grow this in the ground, you might be able to harvest a little more. But uh, growing this in a container just makes it a lot easier. You use less space and uh, you get a lot of leaves as well as roots using this method. And as you can see here, the taro root plant uh, grows a pretty dense root system. As you can see here, we're still harvesting the tubers that are attached uh, to the sides of the plant. Some of them can even be regrown. And as you can see here, the root mass is pretty large. And uh, what you can also do is uh, once you harvest this main plant, you can actually replant the main plant for the next growing season and it should produce uh, some more taro root. Now, I did try out this method and it works really well. All you do is just take the plant and then just plant it again. However, you also need warm temperatures. So if you're in an area that has warmer temperatures, even in the next uh, growing season, you should be okay. So places like zone 10 in Southern California, you should be okay. But if you have cooler weather, uh, taro root the, or the taro plant uh, doesn't grow very well in uh, cooler weather. So you need to make note of that. And here is a taro root recipe. So that's all we have in today's episode. If you want to know more about the taro plant, you can watch these two videos. The video on your left will give you some tips on growing the plant as well as a harvest. And the video on the right will show you some of the differences of growing this plant in containers versus raised bed. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.